Ceiling template. I'll give you right there on top. Prefab with the J box already on top and a test wire. I give you Just plug it in and make sure it works. Timer, high low switch, and a faceplate. The only thing you need is uh, your box. The only thing you need to buy. Go and see the template. It's designed in a way where it's supposed to fit in between 16 inch on center trusses. So even when you don't have a lot of room, it is designed to fit into these smaller bays as well. Perfect. So based on the truss layout in this house, hallway is here that we're in now. That way is a little bit towards the back of the house, a little close to the edge. I can get it a little more centered if I go that way. Right here would be perfect, but my unit's here. As you're gonna see, based on where's available, uh, the unit is like, like right here. Your AC unit. Yeah. So if I went up here, it'd be probably somewhere in that range there. Which is in view of the living room area, but it's still centralized where if I have the front door open and the back door and some of the windows, it's going to pull evenly from all sides. Whereas if the other, if I went the other way with it, I have right about here, you know, anywhere in this area, um, which if I had everything open, I would pull more heavy from this side and I'd be a little bit lighter from places like the kitchen and the living room, mm -hmm. um, which also could, I mean, they're quiet cools, so they're designed to be as quiet as possible, but sleeping in the bedrooms here, we do also then have the fan closer, uh, which somebody with a sensitive ear might be able to, might wake up. Is poker. Set my template. I'm right on the trusses on both sides, so that's great. Make my corners. One thing I like to do is, you know, as, as I get my template put in here and I know where I'm going to be, uh, I then clean it out, you know, physically clean all the insulation off the top of it. So once I cut, uh, it's less of a mess downstairs, uh, helps you out cleaning and looks a lot more professional. Um, and that way you just don't have a bunch of stuff falling in your face while you're doing your job.
this where the wood is our framing is right here and right here uh, you can remove these if you look in here it's just a little tab that they've put in there so you just loosen them up a lot of times you can even do it by hand but you can grab a, uh, a screwdriver and I'll keep these two there's nothing on that side, so it'll still help sandwich the sheetrock for me. A uh, helpful thing that's quite cool does a lot of times is uh, if you have a you know, really large whole house fan, it's hard to get the stuff up into the attic, especially if the attic access, like even here, the attic access is pretty small, but everything that they design is 14 and, and a quarter inches is the template. So everything is designed to fit through that hole, uh, including if you take the duct off the fan, fan itself fits up exactly like that as well. Alright. All three pieces are unlocked. Okay, so what Colin's doing right here is he is separating the blower housing from the duct. The duct is about six foot long. So he's going to put the blower housing about four feet away from the damper box, the damper box that you're going to see from the ceiling. From here, what I'm doing once I've got all the pieces in place is I can set my fan know where I'm going with it based on my distance of the duct. We're probably going to be somewhere right about here. It sits flush on our sheet rod hole that we made. And even though it's got the tabs on it, if I'm up against a piece of wood, I'm still going to put a screw in it. Just in case at some point anybody else ever comes up here with tools and Put something on it, the last thing I want it to do is go falling down through the sheetrock. Get my dust on so I know exactly where my fan can go. is what helps make it quiet so by having this bend on it uh, doesn't increase resistance as much as it actually helps for noise inside the house Mm -hmm. 
They do make a nice little uh, feature where you can just get the screw in first a little bit of the way into the wall. And then you can hit it with the hook there. You can take the weight off. B in for my wiring. Um, so what I usually do is instead of getting the fan set in place, everything's strapped up and put together. Because uh, then the J-Box would be like right there and everything would be quite a bit harder. So you don't have to do it at a certain point. You can do it anytime. So get yourself uh, into at least a semi-comfortable position and do your wiring then. Two different 14-2 wires come out of the fan and down to your switch, which is a double gang. So they both are 14-2, so you got to remember which one's your power and which one's your speeds. So set that self up, set that up for yourself beforehand. And so this one that I hung out of the access with my power, so I'll do one at a time. Don't get mixed up in the wall. Wire before this is our power wire so how the switches are going to sit in the box is going to be our power on the left and our high and low speed selection on the right then once I feed a second one in I feed it over here uh, when I'm in the box there's no confusion to um, which one is which mm -hmm. got it My speeds and my power are in the box. Get the box into the wall. Make sure you obviously give yourself enough room in the attic to staple everything. So here's the power switch. Which these are my power wires. They come in on the left. That's where I put them into the box. And then my High low speed switch on this side. See from the diagram here, my black and white are tied into my standard 120 volts coming in. And then the red is the jumper power to my speed switch, which then the selector switch gives you whichever one you're clicked onto. And if you follow the diagram, obviously high, everything legible. It wouldn't make sense. So have it here. Jumper switch to that side, high and low to this side. Another thing that goes against uh, your common intuition a little bit when you're wiring it is this white wire here, since it's your speed switch, is not tied into your common. So make sure that when you're looking at it, the black and the white that come off of your power timer uh, are the only hots and commons that get tied together. Um, but you do tie in all three ground wires. But your two whites are not both white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape this one uh, red so that anybody comes in here and they can tell that this is a hot wire. I'm good on power everywhere. Um, before I actually put it all in the wall, I'm going to go hit the power to the thing and I'm going to test it right now. And, uh, be, a, be nice to everybody else and label where it was, your break, put it on your breaker now. Low.
Pro Series. Gives you this grill and this little key thing that you can stick in here when it's on, on the ceiling. You can pull that out. And if you ever wanted to, you could take this thing out to take it out and clean it. Remember from earlier, these two sides aren't wood, they're just the metal flange, so make sure you're not cranking them down because you will strip those. And then I showed you a second ago. You can pull this piece out to take it down the line. You're watching Fox Family Heating and Air. Don't forget to subscribe. And check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.